Hello everyone, uh, we're continuing our nice series here concerning uh, calculating fuel performance of an aircraft as well as advanced navigation. And today we're going to be looking at the big tricky one, which is going to be cruise performance. As usual, there are multiple ways to calculate cruise performance. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at both techniques, both the uh, chart method, which uh, is this one, I got this out of a Cessna 172N POH, as well as the complicated graph, but more accurate method that you're going to find a little bit later on. Now, different aircraft companies are going to have kind of different ways to portray this information. Uh, one thing that I recommend you doing, if you're looking for a fun weekend is to actually generate your own table for a given aircraft inside of a flight simulator. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you really get to know your plane. So basically, we're going to look at both techniques today. We're going to start with a simple one, which is our little handy dandy chart here. We're going to look at this slightly more involved one afterwards. So first things first, um, keep in mind, we are working with pressure altitude. I can't say this enough. And like I said, when I put that video together and I was saying, well, you're really going to need to be able to calculate this. It's really critical that you consider pressure altitude. Now, if you're flying in the flight simulator and you put everything at 299 two, surprise, your pressure altitude is equal to your pressure altitude, your indicated altitude. So the way this one works is pretty straightforward. First thing is what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and select your pressure altitude. Then you're going to select the temperature. This is temperature at sea level. And then you're simply going to pick what RPM you want to work at. Let's try it out. So let's say we're at a pressure altitude. This is our cruise pressure altitude of 4,000 feet. And let's say that we're dealing with uh, standard temperature. All we would do now is take a look at this column here, and we take a look at this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and box this in a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see. Go ahead and draw the two lines, and we're going to be dealing with this area right here. Nice. So now what we do is we pick what speed we want to travel at, what fuel we want to use, and then take a look at our RPM over here on the left. So for example, if we wanted to use 64% power, our true airspeed, warning, true airspeed, warning, not indicated, will be 110 knots. Our fuel consumption will be 7.1 gallons per hour, and our brake horsepower, which is basically, like I said, power is gonna be 64%, also known as 2,400 RPM. So if we were inside of our aircraft and we were at 4,000 feet pressure altitude, and it was exactly 15 on a standard day, all we would have to do is go ahead and dial our engine to 2,400 RPM, and we would expect to get a speed of 110 and a gallons per hour of 7.1. Now, if you want to think about this another way, let's say we are carrying uh, 30 gallons of fuel. Let's say that we used 1.1 of those to go ahead and get our aircraft, um, like I said, into the air and taxied. Let's say we use another uh, 2.9 of those for the purposes of climbing up to altitude. That would mean that if I were to use a 64% power divided by 7.1, it would get me 3.66 hours worth of cruising time. Now, the cool thing is my 3.66 is also the 110 knots. So if I now multiply this by 110, I would have a range on that aircraft of 402 nautical miles, which is actually really, really nice. Now you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we do it at a higher speed? Can you run the example again? Sure. So uh, we have 26 gallons divided by 8.4 gets us 3.1 hours of flying time times 118. Notice our range went down. So our initial range was about 402 nautical miles. If we go at full power, you'll notice my range, even though I get there sooner, has dropped nearly 40 nautical miles. Now, if I want to do this as an extreme example, let's say I will use a takeoff power. Or actually, we'll go the other way. We'll use a minimum power here. We'll use this really, really awful 46% power. Ugh. So let's say 26 divided by 93 means it would take us, oh, I'm sorry, 26 divided by 5.5 means we would have 4.7 hours of endurance. However, our range is only 439 nautical miles, which shows you that no coincidence that, as you can see, our initial one gave us the uh, kind of an average speed and range. Our super slow low percentage power actually gave us the absolute longest range and absolute longest flying time. So a lot of people were asking me, how do you calculate you know, fuel one? How do we know how much we need? This is how you're going to be working those equations out, is basically selecting the power based on your needs. Personally, in a flight simulator, I always use 75% power or even 85% of the aircraft lets me get away with it. Because you can see mathematically what happens is you go faster and faster, the drag starts to take over. Now, if you really want to see something interesting here, Observe that at 8,000 feet and 75% power, we'd be doing 122 knots. So again, we'll use my example again here, 8.4. Uh, times uh, what we're doing, 122, that gives me 377 knots, or um, nautical miles, rather. You can see because I went a little bit higher, I was actually able to uh, rescue 10 nautical miles of extra range out of the aircraft. However, those 10 miles are sucked up by the fact I have to climb up to that altitude. So again, it's a tricky proposition, but at least you know how to calculate it. Let's now take a look at the graphic-based. Oh, 
oh, oh man, I remember doing these back in the day. These are these are different. So there are three parts to calculating it in graphic based. Again, this is going to be more accurate than doing it with a chart. But again, this chart's more than good enough. By the way, make sure you keep an eye on temperatures here. If you're working above or below, usually I tell people to round up. In the real world, I interpolate which uh, that's a scary concept. Basically, you kind of take an average between the two. But a lot of times you look at the chart and be like, oh, obviously I'm going to be doing 15 and a half, but I'm not going to get into interpolation. That's getting pretty dangerous. All right, let's take a look at the charts. So there are three charts we care about here. We're going to care about our range. We're going to care about our performance cruise, and we're going to be querying about our engine performance. And I'll show you why. The first one is going to dictate how far we can go. I notice we have two different pieces here. You have one that gives you a 45 minute reserve, and you have one that gives you no reserve. Obviously, if you're flying at night, you're legally required to have a 45 minute reserve. So kind of keep that in mind. So the way this one works is super simple. You're simply going to take the outside air temperature at sea level, go up to the pressure altitude, pressure altitude, warning, warning, that you're going to be traveling at, and then you simply draw a line across to see how much range you're going to get with a certain power setting. So let's go ahead and say I'm climbing up to 8,000 feet, and we'll assume that the temperature today is uh, nice and frosty at a minus 10 on the Celsius scale. Let's go ahead and pull that straight up. I'm going to go ahead and find my 8,000 feet. We're going to measure the same technique. We're going to go straight across. Whoops, it helps if you actually go straight across, right? Okay, cool. And now we just have to draw a line straight down. Now, if we want it 75% power, this is going to give us a range of 510 nautical miles. If we want it 65% power, it's going to give us a range of uh, 540 nautical miles. If we give ourselves 55% power, notice you're starting to get diminishing returns here, you're going to get, it looks like, about 560 or so nautical miles. So you can see the difference between powers here. So let's say on this given flight, you know, I want a little bit of reserve, so I'm going to go ahead and use 65% power which is a pretty fair amount of power. The problem is, what is 65% power on a fixed pitch propeller? Ugh, let's figure it out. So then we go over to this chart here. What this chart will do is this chart will tell us what RPM we need to use in order to get a specific power. So we said we're being at 8,000 and at 65%, right? So let's go ahead and do it again. So then we go down to zero. Go straight, actually said it was a frosty day at minus 10. We'll go straight up here, up to our 8,000 foot line. We're now gonna go straight across like we've done before. And then we're going to go straight down from the 65% power line. Check this out. We need to use 2,490 RPM in order to guarantee that we're going to be getting our correct power. Notice, by the way, that if we use our power here, it actually indicates on here what our fuel consumption is going to be. So in this case, at that particular power setting, if I'm using best power, I could expect to be using 9 gallons per hour, unless I was being very, very aggressive. But since we're not using an economy cruise here, I'd be using that 9 gallons the entire time. So we're almost done. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to determine how fast the aircraft is actually going to be traveling. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves our minus 10, one more. Bring ourselves all the way up to the 8,000 foot line. We're going to go straight across like we did before, and we're going to measure down from the 65% line. And you can see our airspeed here at 8,000 feet at 65% power is going to get us about 100 and let's see, this is going to be 15, 117, 118 knots, about 117. So you can see it's a very precise calculation. So when we actually get up to our altitude, here's the numbers we're going to need to know. First of all, our true airspeed, true, danger, danger, true, airspeed is going to be 117. Our engine is going to be set to 2,490 RPM, and we're going to have a total range here of about 540 nautical miles, and we know we're going to be burning 9 gallons per hour. So if we were to use that example we had a little bit earlier, let's say 26 gallons divided by 9 gallons per hour, that's going to get us 2.88 hours inside of the air. We'll multiply that by our expected speed of 117, and you can see we get 338 nautical miles. Bam, fuel planning FTW. So that's the basics to calculating your cruise. Now, some of you are probably saying, is there a chart for uh, doing a descent? Uh, there is no descent chart. Uh, basically, a descent chart, you take 55% for cruise power, and you just use that all the way down, but you use the airspeed that you actually calculate. Again, it's worth checking out yourself. Most people won't even calculate descent directly unless you're in an airliner, in which case you want to use your usual rules of thumb for that. Uh, next time, we're going to take a look at our final calculation, which is going to be landing. Uh, the landing calculations are relatively straightforward. Uh, basically, you're going to do the reverse to what you did for your takeoff. Obviously, you have to have perfect technique when you land. Otherwise, you won't be able to match up with the chart. Enjoy.